molecules are sticky. Some molecules are stickier than other molecules. In this lesson, we will learn four different types of stickiness, which chemicals In this lesson, we will learn the four different types of stickiness, which chemists refer to as intermolecular forces, or IMFs. The types and strengths of IMFs affect many properties of a substance, including its boiling point and its solubility. First, we need to distinguish the two types of attractive forces. Attractions within a molecule are intramolecular forces, more commonly referred to as bonds. These attractions are much stronger than the attractions that happen between two different molecules called intermolecular forces. It is relatively easy to break intermolecular forces, which leads to a change in phase of the substance, such as from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. On the other hand, when intramolecular forces break, a chemical change occurs and a new substance is formed. Intermolecular forces are attractions between molecules and all are based on coulombic attraction, which is the attraction felt between positive and negative charges. Substances with strong IMFs have higher melting and boiling points. There are four types of IMFs, and the remainder of this chapter will introduce the four IMFs in order of decreasing strength. We'll start with ion dipole forces. The strongest IMF occurs between polar molecules and charged ions. This is how soluble salts dissolve in water. The electronegative ends of the water molecule, that is the oxygen ends, are attracted to the positive cations while the positively charged hydrogens are attracted to the negative anions. Continuing with polar molecules, dipole-dipole intermolecular forces occur between the dipoles of polar molecules. The slightly positive pole of the molecule is attracted to the slightly negative pole of another molecule. In this way, the molecules line up with their dipoles pointing in relatively the same direction. Solids contain more long range order than liquids do with this kind of force. The more polar a molecule is, the more it sticks to the other molecules in the liquid phase. This causes the boiling point to increase with increasing polarity. The figure to the right shows five different substances with similar molecular weights. However, they have very different polarities, which is illustrated by the blue bars. The yellow bars represents a substance boiling point, and you can see that as the polarity increases, the boiling point increases as well. A very special kind of IMF occurs when nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine bond to a hydrogen atom. Because these three elements are more electronegative than hydrogen, they all pull electron density away from hydrogen, giving hydrogen a slight positive charge. When this slightly positively charged hydrogen is attracted to a lone pair on a neighboring molecule, a hydrogen bond forms. Notice that in each of the four examples below, the hydrogen is bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and it is attracted to a lone pair on an adjacent molecule. Even though hydrogen bonding uses the word bonding in its name, it is not a covalent bond. It is a type of IMF. Water has two lone pairs and two covalent bonds to hydrogen, meaning it can form four separate hydrogen bonds. Many of water's amazing and unique properties come from the fact that it can form so many hydrogen bonds. Of special importance to humans are water's high melting and boiling points, its extremely high heat capacity, as well as its acid-base behavior. Hydrogen bonds are holding your DNA strands together right now. They also allow DNA to encode information. 
thymine and adenine are held together by exactly two hydrogen bonds, while guanine and cytosine are held together by three. The carboxylic acid functional group is common in organic chemistry as well as in some of your favorite foods. Carboxylic acids tend to form little dimer pairs through two hydrogen bonds, which are shown here in green. The last and weakest form of intramolecular force are the dispersion forces. Dispersion forces occur in all substances, regardless of polarity. Here's how. Imagine we have two adjacent helium atoms. The top view shows the nucleus in the center with the electrons flying around outside in the s orbital. The bottom view colors both atoms gray because the helium atom does not have a permanent dipole. Now, let's imagine that both of atom B's electrons are at some point, they're both on the left side of that atom. Now, suddenly, atom B has a more negatively charged left side and a more positively charged right side. We call this an instantaneous dipole, which the bottom image shows in blue and red. Atom A, which is adjacent to atom B, will respond to atom B's dipole. Atom A's electrons will be repelled by atom B's electrons, and atom B's electrons will be attracted to atom A's nucleus. We say that atom B has induced a dipole in atom A. These two atoms will attract each other briefly before the random movement of the electron removes both dipoles. Dispersion forces are present in any substance containing electrons and protons, which is to say dispersion forces occur in all substances. The more protons and electrons a substance has, the greater its dispersion forces. In other words, larger and heavier molecules have more dispersion forces than lighter molecules. The more surface area a molecule has, the more dispersion forces it has. In the example to the right, Although anapentane and neopentane have the same molar mass, neopentane is more spherical, meaning it has less surface area and fewer dispersion forces. Therefore, its boiling point is around 25 degrees lower than n-pentane. To summarize the four intermolecular forces we've examined in this lesson, we see that dispersion forces occur in all substances. Dispersion forces are the only forces holding atoms and nonpolar molecules together. Polar molecules will engage in dipole-dipole interactions with other polar molecules. When a polar molecule has an OH, NH, or FH group and lone pairs, it can engage in hydrogen bonding. When a polar molecule is in contact with free ions, the ion dipole IMFs cause one end of the molecule's dipole to be attracted to the cation and the other end of the dipole to be attracted to the anion. As a practice problem, suppose you have pure samples of these five substances. Rank the substance with the highest boiling point on top and the lowest boiling point on the bottom. To solve this problem, you need to identify what kinds of IMFs are in each substance. The uh, substance with the most IMFs and the strongest IMFs will have the highest boiling point. The substance with the weakest or least IMFs will have the lowest boiling point. Of course, all these substances have dispersion forces since dispersion forces exist everywhere. But dispersion forces are quite weak and the molecule C2H2 only contains dispersion forces. So it will have the lowest boiling point. The other molecules are polar and thus have dipole-dipole interactions. Notice that three of these substances have an OH bond, which means that these can engage in hydrogen bonding. These three substances will have a higher boiling point than H2CO, which cannot hydrogen bond. Of those that can hydrogen bond, 
The molecule with two OH groups can make more hydrogen bonds than the other, so it will have the greatest and strongest IMFs and thus the highest boiling point. Between the next two molecules, both are polar and both have one OH group to engage in hydrogen bonding. The tiebreaker will go to the larger molecule, which will have stronger dispersion forces and a higher boiling point.